we want you to come to that stadium and watch us beat the New York Giants. Okay? Jerry Jones fired up. We want to know who wins the rematch on Sunday and why. Skip, I'll turn it over to Let you. Let me talk to our two football experts because <laughs> earlier in the show, I attempted to reason with Stephen A. Jumps off the bandwagon Smith, mm -hmm. uh, who oh loves boy. him some New York football giants, and he could not comprehend the meaning of my words. Uh. There is no logical reason for this pick, but I am picking the Dallas Cowboys to win this game 30 to 28. Wow. The reason there's no logical reason is because I just lost my most important defensive player, the quarterback of my defense, the leading tackler of my defense, Sean Lee. I just lost the running back in DeMarco Murray, who ran up 131 yards in the Wednesday night opener, season opener at the Giants in that tour de force cowboy win against the Giants in their stadium. I'm down to probably my third and fourth string running backs because Felix Jones, a proven backup, has a bum knee. So w why should I pick the Cowboys? Well, I'm going to hang on to one thing and one thing only. They have lost three straight home games and been owned by Eli Manning in the house that Jerry Jones built. And if memory serves, even though Jerry might have put some bulletin board material up in the Giants locker room, I believe Eli's first visit to that stadium, he signed his locker just to sort of leave his mark on, you know, like staking out his territory. And he went back and backed it up three straight times, averaging 345 yards passing in each of the three victories. But they were close victories. And in this case, Dallas is going to cling to the notion that they're capable because they went up to New York and they basically dominated them because that was 433 total yards to 269. Romo outplayed Eli on opening Wednesday night. There's no reason he can't repeat that. This is last stand, last showdown, last roundup for the Dallas Cowboys. They're either going to go north or south. And my punchline here, can we see the play that changed the world last year in the NFL? This is Tony Romo missing Miles Austin with what would have been the clinching touchdown oh. against the New York football Giants. Uh, if that play is connected me upon, a river. Yes. If that's cry connected me upon, a river. all of a sudden the Giants season uh. is over. There's no Super Bowl. And I don't know, maybe the Cowboys get hot and go to the Super Bowl. This time, Romo connects with Miles Austin in the fourth quarter. 30 to 28 home team wow. against all odds. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, Skip. <laughs> I, I, I just start off, no, I just start off with the I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm New York Giants all the way. And I'm going to tell you, Skip, we used to go in, and Christian knows this, before a game, they used to sit down, the offensive coordinators, and they used to strip the plays, strip the first 20 plays they were going to run. And I bet you if we go look at the Giants' strip plays, what they're going to run against Dallas, I probably out of those f first 20, I bet the first 15 is probably going to be run. Inside run. Run, run, run. Between the tackles, downhill, maybe some whams, some traps. But they are going to come at these boys, especially with Sean Lee being going to mm -hmm. the top interceptor mm -hmm. and tackler they're going to lay the blades down on these guys they're going to give them big boys a chance up front to roll off the ball like that's what we like to do mm -hmm. starting off a game and eli's going to sit back the first five ten plays handoff handoff probably that 16th play fake handoff try to go over the top mm -hmm. that's their game plan that's the giants makeup and right now with sean lee being gone mm -hmm. like you say they're emotional leader they're quarterback mm -hmm. on defense and I've heard, I got some friends down in Dallas, talked to some friends of mine, and they said out of the two, Sean Lee or DeMarcus Ware, which two could they get along without? Mm -hmm. They said DeMarcus Ware, they could get along without him. I'll buy that's that. That's how important I agree Sean with that. Lee well, that's is. That's why I called him the most yeah. important player so, on the defense. So, Skip. I, I, now, wait, you played for the... Uh, Giants. Oh, the Giants. <laughs> oh, there we go. You're disqualified, Loma. No, oh, all right. Well, well, uh, you're, uh, you're, uh, Listen, why, 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 I, you know, we don't, have, I don't have to talk. I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable chilling here in L.A., you know, because eh, it's really a non-issue to me. Uh, I, I, Romo has had some success in his 12 games against the New York Giants, even though he's shown, he's come up small in big moments against everybody else. But the reality is that I can't see the Giants losing two times in the same season to the Dallas Cowboys. Just can't see it. I consider the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> to be an accident waiting to happen. All right, That's how I feel that about them. That's how I feel about them. And they'll be in their $1.2 billion playpen. I spoke to Amar Bradshaw the other day. He's got the troops ready to roll. You know how hardcore he is. He talked about how everybody's paying attention. 
uh, to what Jerry Jones had said uh, during, you know, during training camp when he was telling people to come out and support the team. They remember. Mm -hmm. They know that the Dallas Cowboys opened their mouths, and they know they're going to have to back it up. Period. This ain't open in day where you're rusty coming out of training camp in preseason. They got the legs under them now. Mm -hmm. They're flowing. The rhythm's there. Victor Cruz, I expect to see the salsa in Texas. And it's not, I'm not worried about it. I'm just not worried about it. <laughs> Might be the second home yeah. of the salsa in Texas. <laughs> Staying in the NFC Wait, East. Hold, hold, hold on, on hold on. I got to wrap a bow around. Oh, this. boy. <laughs> Stephen A., yeah. I'm going way out on the limb. Dallas is going to win. Dallas will then be tied in the loss column in the division with your Giants. I say the Eagles lose. I say, and we're about to talk about RG3, I say the Redskins will lose at the Steelers. No shame in that. All of a sudden, the Cowboys will be right back in the saddle in the NFC East. Come right back into control here of this division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, see, see. I, here's, the, here's the ignorance of your words. Oh, okay. You think that's a good thing. <laughs> it's when they're in the saddle that mm. they mess up. That's what you're missing. Yeah, wait, say That's it one more time. That's when they struggle. Because they're an accident waiting to happen. That's what they do. <laughs> it's who they are. Yeah. And with that, I say <laughs> we're moving to the, uh, staying in the NFC East and talking about your boy, you just mentioned him, rookie quarterback RG3 and the Redskins face a stiff test on Sunday when they travel to face the Steelers. And last year's win over the Steelers in the playoffs, a rookie quarterback by the name of Tim Tebow. Mm. Has heard of him before. He threw for 360 Wait, he yards. Threw for 316 against the Steelers? <laughs> against the then number ranked defense. Number one, number one ranked. In the NFL. Wow. Tim Tebow did that? Tim Tebow did that. Wow. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you heard of that. Unbelievable. You didn't know that, did you? I did not know mm -hmm. that. All right, well. <laughs> so, okay, we're doing a little bit of comparison, and we want to know, you know, yeah. how well will RG3 do in comparison to Tim Tebow in this Sunday's game? Well, wait, can we, can we let Stephen A. Yeah, go ahead. Let him start I got to hear this. Yeah. Wind him up. Wind yeah. him up. Well, listen, RG3, listen. RG. <laughs> Steelers defense, they, they concern me. They're a bit old. They're a bit slower. And not having Troy Polamalu at safety is going to make things incredibly hard because obviously his instincts can, can really be a game changer. So not having him in there against somebody instinct, as instinctual and as athletically gifted as RG3 is going to be a problem. I have no doubt about it. I expect RG3 to pass for over, 50, for over 300 yards. Mm. Oh. I expect them to throw a couple of touchdowns. I expect them to run effectively. I expect them to be in the game. But I think Big Ben Roethlisberger with Mike Wallace, with Antonio Brown, with Dwyer running the ball effectively since Rashad Mendenhall has been injured and Isaac Redman, we don't know what he's going to do. You've got enough weapons. You're in Pittsburgh to Steel City, and their defense is experienced enough to find a way to neutralize you at least somewhat. I think it'll be a close game, but I think the Steelers will ultimately win 28-24. Wow. Mm. I got to, let me throw this figure out. Uh -oh. Ready? I'm about Bro, to get some deep. Homework. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, <laughs> discount right. belly check. Right. Dick LeBeau, since 04, 13-1 against rookie quarterbacks. 13-1. Wow. Now, is that a Tyler Korn stat? Th that, that is Tyler oh, Korn. Wait, no, Tyler. TK, thanks, TK. TK. Thank you. <laughs> but Skip, to me, the, Dick LeBeau has credit, but I'm telling you, that 3-4 defense, it, it messes quarterbacks up. It messes linemen up because you don't see the 3-4 a lot. Then you got four linebackers to deal with, and with those linebackers, they could be anywhere. You can line linebackers up anywhere, off the ball, on the ball, back. You know, it's, it's a lot of things you can do with them, and that confuses young quarterbacks. We know Dick LeBeau like to send people from everywhere. You don't know where people coming from. Mm, and and Stephen A., I just think Ryan Clark is going to hop offset some of the 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 with Troy being gone I think Ryan Clark's gonna help that he wasn't in Denver well, when they played against T, uh, Tim Tebow back then so I think Ryan's is, Ryan is gonna help but Dick LeBeau I'm hanging my hat on Dick well, LeBeau let me say this up let me say this real quick fuse that young fella I'm gonna say this real quick I believe in my frenemy as Skip Bayless so eloquently states such a word my frenemy Ryan Clark just spoke to him the other day by the way too here's the deal I believe that Ryan Clark can make him and can make up for that because obviously he wasn't in he wasn't in he couldn't play in Denver. Obviously, we all know that you know you, you know his his mm. sickle cell whatever. It, mm. I, I don't have it in front of me. I apologize. Yeah, you're Here's right. the deal. Here's the deal. That's going to make up for it. But where you lose me, Lomas, mm. 
where you lose me, discount belly check, <laughs> where you lose me is this. If you're going to say that, then you're talking about, well, you know, Dick LeBeau and his 13-1 and one record. Well, you know what? Tim Tebow was practically a rookie last year. And look what he did to the Steelers. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I respect Dick LeBeau, but, but the luster has dimmed to some Stephen degree a, you after what he let happen in the postseason. You said it was more so the defense, right? Them playing that bump and run defense that allowed the 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 Marys Who's Thomas. the orchestrator? Who's the man that controls the defense for the Steelers? Right, you're right. Dick well, LeBron controls saying. it, and I think I'm he not, learns I'm not from this. Him right I think now. he learned from that last year too. Not to do something like that, even if you're playing a young Lomas, rookie quarterback. Lomas and Christian, <laughs> yes, I sir. have not forgiven Dick LeBeau for what he put me through. <laughs> I'm not ready to give him credit for that.